Welcome to Electron Online, and here's our next big topic in, in chemistry. It's called thermochemistry. Now, thermo means heat, so we're dealing with the heat principles of chemistry. Before we get started, let's talk about some basic definitions so we understand how to deal with this. So, first of all, when we deal with chemistry, we usually do things. We combine elements, we combine molecules, we combine solutions. Uh, we titrate solutions, we do all kinds of things, so there are chemical reactions taking place. And so usually that event is a system, we call that a system. So by definition, a system is part of the universe in which the event of interest occurs, and typically we're talking about a chemical reaction. Now, the surrounding is the rest of the universe, and so we want to understand the interaction between what goes on in the system and how that interacts with the rest of the universe. So therefore, we have three types of systems. We have what we call an open system, a closed system, and an isolated system. And I always think that closed and isolated, shouldn't that be the same thing? But no, in chemistry it is not. Open system means that we're doing something in a container perhaps, but the container is open and we can add matter, we can take matter out, energy can go in, energy can go out, so it's open. So we can interchange both matter, mass, and energy, and so we call that a reaction in which things can be added, taken out, energy can go in and out, and so forth. A closed system is like this, where no matter can be put in, but energy can still go in and out. For example, it can lose heat, energy can go out, it can gain heat, energy can go in, but you can't add or take out any matter, so it's a closed system in that respect. Isolated system implies that something is going on in here that neither matter can go in or out, and not even energy can go in and out, so it's usually insulated. We call it an insulator, it's insulated, so a nice thick layer of insulation, so very little of any energy can go in or out for all practical purposes. We could say no energy has been exchanged. So, we also need to understand that there's different kinds of energy. We have, for example, mechanical energy. Now, this is something we typically talk about in physics, but it has some application to chemistry. We have kinetic energy. That means there is motion. V stands for velocity, M stands for mass. So the equation associated with kinetic energy is 1 mv squared. So we have an object. You throw it through the room. That object, as it's flying through the room, has kinetic energy because it's moving. Potential energy is energy gained by an object because it has height. For example, this eraser right here has potential energy because it's above the ground. If I drop it, it will fall down, and so releasing that potential energy. Springs can be compressed or elongated, and uh, that causes you to have potential energy within the spring, and that's the equation for that. So we typically don't deal too much with this in chemistry. Now, we do deal in chemistry with heat energy. It's another form of mechanical energy. It's a less usable form of energy because heat is usually trapped within the material, within the atoms. It's the random motion, thermal motion as we call it, of the atoms in an object. Could be a solid, could be a liquid, could be a gas. The motion is called thermal motion and therefore it has heat. It contains energy locked in the uh, motion of the atoms. And yes, we will be talking about generating heat, heat being lost, heat being gained and so forth. The next type of energy we want to talk about is called radiation energy. All objects in the universe, every object here on the, black, on the whiteboard, the whiteboard itself, myself, anything, every object radiates out energy and then also receives energy from all the objects around us. So this is electromagnetic energy that's constantly interchanged between objects. Objects that are hot produce a lot more electromagnetic energy. Uh, radiation and they cool down because of that. Objects that are cool receive a lot more electromagnetic radiation, therefore they heat up, and so there's always this change of energy between objects, and this is called electromagnetic radiation, electromagnetic waves. Another kind of energy that we're going to be dealing with, of course, a lot in chemistry is what we call chemical energy. Chemical energy is energy stored within the atoms, within the molecules, because of their electrical arrangement with the electrons. In other words, the way the chemical bonding is situated. Um, the way the electrons are arranged. Electrons can be arranged in some ways where the energy level is lower. It can be arranged in other ways where, where the energy level is higher. When atoms combine, they exchange electrons. The electrons typically then are in a more stable configuration and therefore the energy level of the atom or of the molecule drops as opposed to the uh, energy level of the individual atoms that form the molecule. And for example, if you have sodium and chlorine, now sodium is a metal and chlorine, uh, 
typically a gas in this um, in free nature uh, or in a liquid form if it's in a solution if you bring the two together uh, what happens then is they form a bond and they form a sodium chloride molecule of course most of us know that that is table salt and when that happens is the energy contained within the sodium and the chlorine when they combine some of that energy is released because sodium chloride is a more stable form than the two elements by themselves and so energy then escapes but don't forget the adage is that energy is always conserved if we take the whole totality of all the energy heat mechanical chemical and so forth the total amount of energy available is always conserved and so whatever energy levels these had before the reaction took place is equal to the energy level this has plus whatever energy escaped the reaction. So if we take all that together, the totality of energy here equals the totality of energy there. So we always have a situation where energy will be conserved and we'll keep that in mind when we do these chemical reactions and try to keep track of the heat being gained and the heat being lost within the reaction. So hopefully this gives you a basic understanding of the different ways of looking at energy, looking at heat, and how we look at systems and whether or not they're isolated or not within the chemical reaction realm. So there you go, good start. Start looking at the videos if you're interested in that because we'll be talking a lot about the heat exchanges in chemical reactions in the next number of videos.